Hello, AP Biology students, and welcome to Unit 4, Lecture Topics 1 through 4, and this is Lecture Part B. Um, so this will be typically be a think pair share but I'd like you to uh, think about how do you think cells process signals? Um, in the last lecture, Part A, we discussed um, how do cells do a little bit of signaling, and now we're going to look at how do the cells actually go through and process those signals that they receive um, from other cells. <clears throat> so uh, let's take a look. So cell signaling overview. Uh, basically what we see here is that cell to cell messages can be divided into three basic stages. Um, and if we, we look at those three basic stages, uh, we're gonna look at how they uh, first do reception. And the reception is when ligands are gonna bind to a receptor. Um, then ultimately then there is transduction. And in transduction, the signal is gonna be converted. I like to think of this as like when you're playing music, uh, you have that amplifier that's gonna amplify that amplify the, the message that's gonna be received by the cell. And then the third stage in cell signaling and processing a message is the response that is to uh, result from that chemical message. So uh, the response, a cell process is altered. So somewhere in there, the cell is going to uh, basically take that chemical message and it's going to use that message to have a change in cell activity or, or have a resulting change in cell activity. So uh, let's look at each stage in depth, looking at re reception, transduction, and response. So in stage one, ultimately, <clears throat> What we have there is reception, and it's going to be the detection and receiving of a ligand by a receptor in the target cell. So just a quick, uh, do a little recap. Remember that a ligand itself is a substance that is going to form a complex with a, a biomolecule, and ultimately it's going to serve um, a purpose, a, a biological purpose, um, when it's going to bind um, to the cell and then it's going to process that signal, a signal at a binding site on that target protein. Um, so in reception, the ligand um, is uh, the detection and receiving of a ligand by that receptor uh, of the target cell. Um, is gonna is gonna pull in that message. So the receptor itself is some sort of macromolecule that binds to a signal molecule um, known as the ligand itself. And ultimately, all receptors have an area that interacts with the ligand and an area that's going to transmit a signal to a pr another protein. Um, when doing so, uh, the binding between the ligand and the receptor um, is highly specific. Um, so basically, uh, when that ligand binds that receptor protein, uh, it's going to start that activation. So in, in reception then, um, when the, the ligand binds to the receptor, the receptor is going to be activated. Um, and Ultimately, then what, what happens is the receptor is going to undergo a conformational change. Remember that word conformational means a, a shape change or, or a change in form. So the receptor activates by a, a change in form there, and it's going to allow the receptor to interact with other cellular molecules. And ultimately, when this happens, it's going to initiate a transduction signal. Um, in doing so, receptors can be in the plasma membrane or they can be intracellular. So let's take a look at, at plasma membrane receptors versus those that are intracellular receptors. 
Plasma membrane receptors are the most common type of receptors involved in a single pathway. Um, basically, they're going to bind to ligands that are both polar, water soluble, and large. Um, examples of plasma membrane receptors are going to be like the G protein coupled receptors called GPCRs. And you have ligand gated ion channels <clears throat> that are also going to serve as plasma membrane receptors. On the other hand, we have these intracellular receptors. And intracellular receptors, as the name implies, are going to be found in the cytoplasm of the cell. Remember that the cytoplasm is the area that is between the cell membrane and the nucleus. Um, so these intracellular receptors are found in the cytoplasm or the nucleus of the target cell. And ultimately, it's going to bind to ligands that can pass through the plasma membrane itself. In doing so, um, those ligands are, are therefore going to be hydrophobic molecules because they're able to pass through that cell membrane. And examples would be steroids and thyroid hormones and gases like nitric oxide. Are, are things that are able to uh, pass through there. So in stage one reception, uh, let's look at intracellular receptors. Uh, basically, uh, if you're looking at, at intracellular receptors, uh, there you have the extracellular fluid. Um, here you have the signaling molecule coming in and the singling, sing, signaling molecule is gonna pass through that plasma membrane um, and ultimately, um, inside the cytoplasm, we have these intracellular receptors to which that, that uh, signaling molecule is going to bind. And then ultimately, then, that will go into uh, the nucleus, so it will pass through the nuclear membrane into the nucleoplasm, um, where ultimately that message can be received by the DNA. Um, remember that in the DNA itself, uh, there are genes in the DNA, and those genes are going to code for a specific activity. Um, just a little note in there uh, related to the AP exam. Um, the AP exam will not expect you to be able to classify any given molecule as hydrophobic. Um, usually they will either tell you it is hydrophobic, or they will say that the molecule is a steroid hormone. Um, just a quick recap, remember that steroids uh as far as biochemistry are those uh fat molecules so they are very hydrophobic because it is a fat steroids are fat unlike hormones which are more protein or which are are protein based next stage is called transduction <clears throat> in transduction the conversion of an extracellular signal um to an intracellular signal that will bring about a cellular response um, ultimately, because you're going to have that cellular response, it's going to require a sequence of changes in a series of molecules known as a sing signal transduction pathway. And in a sing signal transduction pathway, um, you're going to use um, a series of those <clears throat> intracellular signaling molecules. Um, there you can see an example of a signal transduction pathway there. Um, as that molecule passes uh, from one, uh, that message passes from one molecule to the next. So in the signal transduction pathway, um, basically you have, uh, it's going to regulate protein activity through uh, two basic things. Um, the first thing that it will uh, regulate protein activity is through phosphorylation by the enzyme protein kinase. Um, <clears throat> ultimately, uh, this relays the signal inside the cell. Um, the second type is dephosphorylation by the enzyme protein ki kinase, um, by the enzyme protein phosphatase, sorry. And ultimately, uh, what that does is it's going to shut the pathway off. So it shuts off pathways itself. Um, remember, uh, as always, structure equals function. So a change in shape means a change in function. And in doing so, when you change the shape of 
of uh, protein, ultimately you're going to have a change in the function there. <clears throat> Continuing on with transduction then. Um, in transduction, during transduction, um, the signal is going to be amplified. And uh, in doing so, you get these second messengers. And second messengers are these small non-protein molecules and ions that help relay the message and amplify the response that is needed within the cell. Um, basically, we can look at uh, cyclic AMP or C-AMP. Uh, is the abbreviation there, but cyclic AMP is a common second messenger that is used in transduction. So ultimately then, after we amplify that message via transduction, then we're going to initiate some sort of response. And the response is, is the final molecule in the signaling pathway. Um, it converts the signal to a response that will alter some sort of cell process. So here, um, as it comes through, we can initiate A, B, or C. Um, so let's take a look at what A, B, or C can be. Ultimately, in A, um, you could have a protein there that can alter membrane permeability. Or in the case of B, um, you could be doing something with an enzyme that will change uh, a metabolic process, um, some sort of reaction. It will alter the a reaction that's taking place or not taking place within the cell. And then C is a protein that is going to turn genes on or off. Um, remember that genes code for everything. Um, so it could be the coding of the producer certain enzyme or to manufacture a certain protein um, through protein synthesis, et cetera. So ultimately, um, you have <clears throat> basically, when you think about it, genes uh, create proteins, but proteins are used to regulate genes by turning them on and off when we think about this whole process of, of this signal transduction pathway. So as a quick review, um, what are the three stages of cell signaling? The answer there would be Reception, transduction, and response. Number two, what is the actual signal that's being transduced in a single transduction pathway? So think about that for a minute. The answer is a ligand, which is that molecule that is going to be used to form that uh, biological complex to initiate some sort of response. And number three, how is this signal passed from outside to inside the cell? So ultimately then the answer here would be through transduction and during transduction, the signal is relayed by a protein kinases and amplified by these second messengers. So signal transduction pathways themselves um, single transduction pathways can influence how a cell responds to its environment. <clears throat> um, they can result in changes in gene expression and cell function. They can alter phenotypes or result in cell death known as apoptosis. Um, single trans changes in single transduction pathways can uh, basically um, is when you have mutations to receptor proteins or to any component of the signaling pathway that will end up in the result of a change to that transduction of the signal itself. <clears throat> All right, let's take a look at the practice FRQ. Um, some diseases such as cancer and diabetes are caused by defective protein phosphatases. Ultimately, explain how such a defective protein would affect a signal transduction pathway. So um, pause for a minute, think about this answer, and then hit play uh, to see the correct response. All right, so the answer is that protein phosphatases are responsible for the dephosphorylation of molecules. 
Um, bulk, basically, if they are defective, um, then they will not be able to perform their function, um, which result, which would result in an alteration to the signaling pathway. Um, they are also partially responsible for stopping signal pathways. If they are defective, the signal pathway uh, would continue. So that's it for um, lecture B on topics one through four. Um, thank you for tuning in, everybody, and please be sure to, to check the Schoology update and the syllabus to see um, what else you are required to do for the work. Um, thank you again, everyone, and have a nice day.